Hey Audacious Church, trust you're staying warm during these cold winter months that we're having here in the UK. And if you're in some part of the world where it's hot, we are totally envious of you right now. But wherever you are, praying that God's uh, dreams, His favor finds you this year. Pray that you continue to step according to His plans and purposes for your life. Well, we're in part five of our Bible devotions for this year, and we've been looking at believing for the good. Looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. And yesterday, we looked at one of the mindsets that fights against this verse. That mindset being, it's not easy, therefore it must not be the will of God. The second myth that we want to look at that fights against this verse, and we really need to crack this, is that the idea that it just fell into place, therefore it must be God's will. Now, I've heard people say that so many times over the years. Well, it just fell into place. It just happened. It must be God. But I want to say this. The will of God rarely just falls into place. In fact, there's very little scriptural evidence to show this. In the Bible, God makes a promise to his people, the Israelites, saying, I will give you a land. They called it the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. But to get to that land was a process. The journey started in slavery, continued for 40 years in the wilderness. It took them to a river that was in flood. It led them into battle after battle. And the Bible says it took them years to inherit the promised land. Yet, if it's true that the will of God just falls into place, it would have surely just happened in a moment. But the will of God isn't like that. You see, it would be very easy for God to just give to you the dreams. It would be very easy for God to give you a successful business. Uh, It would be very easy for God to give you the promise he's given to you right now. But the issue often is this, is that you and I are rarely ready to receive it. We've got to remember that God is not just committed to where we're going, but the people we're becoming on the journey. In James chapter 1 verse 4, it says this, perseverance must finish its course so we can be mature and complete. You see, God is committed to developing and maturing you so that when you get what he promised, when you achieve what he said, that you have the character and the competence to hold on to that, giving God the glory and not just saying, look how great I am. And although the promised land is good, he's committed to you, the person you are becoming. I really believe that this year, the will of God is found in Isaiah 28 verse 10. For it is do and do, do and do, rule on rule, a little here and a little there. And I love this verse because God is not just committed into us falling into the promised land. He's committed to the journey, the process, the do and do, the rule on rule, the little here and the little there. You see, friends, maybe your life isn't what you want it to be. And maybe it isn't what you saw when you sat on that bicycle. Remember the analogy from the other day? on the top of the hill, looking at the view ahead. But this is what God says for your life. Do and do, rule and rule, a little here, a little there. You see, we want our lives to be how they dreamt they would be. We want everything now, but God is committed to the journey, a little bit at a time. An optimist knows this. An optimist knows that what is promise will come to pass. It may be postponed, but it's on the way. That day is coming bit by bit, little by little. And if you're just waiting it to fall into place, friends, and you're going to be waiting a long time. So I want to encourage you today, start the journey now. Commit to the God process. The next step to your miracle and breakthrough is in the decision that you make right now. We're not just waiting, believing with fingers crossed. We're starting the journey. And my final encouragement for you today is this. It's found in 2 Peter 1 verse 3, that through God's divine power, he has given us everything we need for life and godliness. I love that. God's promise to us is that he has already placed in us and around us everything we need. The person God ordained you to be is already in you and his promise is to draw it out of you bit by bit at the right time over life's journey with him. 
So whether today you find yourself on a hilltop or freewheeling, or maybe pedaling as fast as you can to climb the next slope, know this, that God is with you. He's committed to not only your promised land, but your journey to getting there. The quote of the day is this, God is not only committed to bringing you into your promised land, but also your journey towards the promised land. Have a great day. Love you, church. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.